equity, small rental deals. Bring in one or two investors that have some sort of a role in the process, even if the deal provider does not, does most of the legwork. So you guys do most of the sweat. They do a little bit of sweat. Okay? Here's the why, here's why small rental deal, uh, small rental deals are a good place to get started. Once you've done a few uh, loan deals in this business, right? Then you can graduate up to small equity deals. Okay? This requires a filing with the SEC. There was like 20 some investors in that deal. Okay? There's a lot, I mean, this is a big undertaking. And, and there is a lot of regs around this. Okay, the reason for that is this qualifies as a, as a security with the SEC. That's what, the, that's what the S stands for in the SEC. Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay, so they regulate stuff like this. What you can do is there's certain things that don't, that, that disqualify what you're doing from being a security. Small equity is not, does not qualify as a security. Okay. The reason why bottom line is if you can give a role to your investors, if they can have some active investment, even if you're like 90% of the active, as long as they're doing something, okay, and then they have a, a, a job, a job description could be auditing the books, could be, you know, doing anything, driving past the property, snapping some pictures every here and again, whatever it is you can come up with that they're comfortable doing, as long as they've got some legwork that they're doing towards the property, and if they have to personally guarantee the mortgage, the way I look at that. That's automatically that's automatically an active role because they had to produce the credit and produce the, you know, the wherewithal and everything like that to be able to personally guarantee that loan. They also have to interact with the lender. That's activity right there. So okay, so this is uh, two properties that we did in South Trenton. Uh, equity investor put up fifty grand. Okay, um, you got a 50-50 split. We put up we put up all the sweat. Uh, we put up no money. He put up all the all the money. And we bought these two properties, um, and also and borrowed another 50 grand worth of self-directed IRA money, mm -hmm. and renovated these houses, rented them out, cash flowed them for like seven years, just sold them. Okay, um, and I sold these as a turnkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do the same thing over and over, right? So we sold these two properties as a turnkey and did really, really well on this. And my investor, my equ my cash provider, stepped in and personally guaranteed this. Got it? Questions? No. Uh -oh. There we go. So private loans. This is real easy. A short-term loan secured by real estate collateral, like a mortgage on a piece of real estate. This is, you know, like, hey, can I borrow X amount of dollars? You say yes. We form a promissory note that defines all the terms of the loan. Which, like, hey, can I borrow ten bucks to go down and buy myself a slice of pizza? That's a loan agreement that we have, and I can put it in writing on what I'm going to pay you back. That's a promissory note, too. Okay? Um, but what makes real estate different is, on real estate, I can offer collateral, you know, which is not the promissory note. The collateral is another document that's called a mortgage. Okay? The mortgage is a document that, that we fill out, and if it's done the right way, it gets filed with the county clerk. Okay? The county clerk puts it on the, deed of the, pro on, on the title of the property, gets filed, and what that mortgage says is, this property cannot get other mortgages on it. I have first right of claims to that property. And if they don't pay me this money under the terms of this mortgage, I can come and do what? I can take it. I can take the property, right? Because of a lien, of a, because I have a first lien position on the property. Could that be by foreclosure you do it? Yes. Yeah, it depends on the state. But there's, there's something, there's, um, uh, other states have something called a deed of trust. Um, but in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, it's a mortgage. Um, and that, in some states have very quick foreclosure laws. Uh, in some states, something called a deed in lieu of foreclosure is legal. Uh, in New Jersey, it's not. A deed in lieu means that if I can prove that you broke the mortgage by any stretch, I can just go file my deed in lieu, and the deed comes over to me. So, you, you, if you go into default and I can prove it, then it's now my property. So, not, not too good for the cash provider, but it's a good, a good incentive to pay your, to pay your mortgage. Uh, knowing the legal things that go along with private loans and small equity, did you do a lot of reading on that, or is that more of talking to a lawyer and, and then just understanding the process? Both. Both. There's very, I mean, you know, and I, I get I'm not, but my book talks a lot about this mm -hmm. um, because this is a great, this is the place that I think most investors should start. This is a great, this is one of the best win-wins, and it's easy to understand for a cash provider, deal provider, um, and it's just it's just a good spot for a lot of people to get going. And so it's something I talk about a lot in my book, Raising Private Capital. 
Uh, that said, uh, there's also other stuff out there on it. Um, and I talked a lot to lawyers to help me structure this stuff. So, um, this is a flip that we did in Philadelphia, believe it or not. That's the same room. This going the steps here, that's a different flight of steps, of course. I mean, different set of stairs, but that's to say this is the same living room which blew out the back of it. And we did this whole deal with private money, mm -hmm. with a private loan. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And this is, I mean, it, it can inspire you because this is a fix and flip. And fix and flips are creating livable, inspiring spaces. This is not a livable, inspiring space. <laughs> that is. Right? right? This is something pride of ownership, somebody to be proud to live in, kind of cool, you know. And what private loans allow us to do is there's very, like, very unlikely for me to get bank financing on something like this. Okay? But I can get an investor that believes in me, that wants to loan me the money to help me take this and turn into something like that. And what they see is that, yeah, they can invest in a pharmaceutical company with their IRA and maybe make a good return, but it's hard to get tangible proof of what their money's actually doing good, right? This is doing good. This puts people to work. This gives new people a, this gives new people a house, you know, whether it's to rent or to sell, doesn't matter, right? Um, this kind of helps make the world a better place if you really want to get, you know, get, uh, get uh, fuzzy about it. You know, and their money can do that, and they can reach out and touch it. Because most likely this is in their backyard. This is within driving distance of where they are. If you guys are starting local with your investors, they can go and drive by and see it. You can see their money at work. I challenge them to go and find your money at work invested in a mutual fund. You know? Okay. This is a joint venture yet again. This is like more of a level 202 kind of thing. Um, this is a hybrid of a private loan and an equity deal. This is where they have a loan. The cash provider, they, they, uh, they get an interest rate on their money like they would on a loan, right? And then they get a rate of return on their money, okay? So they get like maybe 8%. Like this is, a, this is a deal we did in Philly. This We built three townhouses, okay? We had to do a joint venture on this because I had a bank loan in first position. Banks normally get a little squirrely when you go and try and put a private lender behind them. You know, that's in second position because normally the person first has to give permission to someone to step in behind them. Subordination, right? Okay, so they did not want to see a second mortgage. They wanted to see equity. So we had to bring in this investor that's willing to put money up as a loan to the property with an interest rate, but they wanted to, they wanted to give him a slice too. So he got 6% on his money, or 8% on his money, excuse me, plus 12% of the profit, okay? This investor put in 290,000 out of his self-directed IRA, okay? He got 8% on his money on over 10 months, okay? So like 22,000 on his money, okay? And then he made a check, another check of something to the tune of like nineteen thousand dollars as a chunk of the profit. When you sold it. Yes. So this guy made something like forty grand in ten months on a two hundred ninety thousand dollar investment. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, but we got to keep the eighty eight percent, so we did well too, right? right? Is that ground up? Huh? Is yes. Ground up? There's three ground up lots in Philadelphia with rooftop decks and a finished basement. You know, typical Philly it? flip, huh? How many units? Three. The units? Yeah, we bought the land, uh, bought the land from an architect of all people, because because the architect could deliver. Architects are the best like um, untapped lead source that people that, that people just nobody ever talks to, you know. But, but you should, because the architect uh, had the piece of land and he was going to develop it himself, but he just didn't have the capital, didn't have the, the time, whatever. So he sold us the land. It was shovel ready. So he went through zoning. He got the permits. We closed with permits in hand on a Tuesday. My guy was digging the hole on Thursday. Wow. Okay? So it's shovel, it's called shovel ready deal, meaning like literally you come out with a shovel and start working. It's it, then this is a device again, this is a two oh two level deal. This is a fix and flip on steroids. But if you've got the wherewithal and the builder that can build this, then you can you can do well. How long did it take you to do it? <coughs> ten months. That's it, ten Super months. Nuts. And so what is the value of these properties? Four ten. Each we underwrote it at three eighty five. Four ten for all three. No, for each one of them. For each ten. Wow. It's Philly, baby. That's <laughs> well, where in Philly. I don't know. You know, is it like um, East Kensington, Fishtown? Okay. Yeah. So we paid. I mean, you guys want the numbers? Huh? You guys want? You guys want to know? You guys want to go for the numbers? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <coughs> we paid two hundred ten thousand bucks for the lots. For the land, with permits, with everything included, okay? That's 70K a door, okay? Uh, the pride, I'm going to need your calculator. 
the properties were like 1,930 square feet. I think I'm, make, I've, I'm guessing a little bit on that, but it's only because I know how much my development cost was. Um, my development cost was $110 a square foot in construction, in hard, in hard cost construction. And remember, the architect fees and all that stuff are already where? They're already inside. That's the already included, right? That's incredible. So yeah. what's 1930 times 110? 212,000? 212,000? 212,000. 212,000. 212,000. What's that times three? 636, nine. Okay. Then let's say that we had another, huh, everybody just tell me his appliances were like 15 grand. Um, and then, other like you know carrying cost fees, other stuff. Five. Yeah, sure. I think that's a little high, but mm -hmm. let's just say for conversation's sake, for twenty-five grand. Okay. That for each or for all? Huh? That's all in. All in. Okay. Six sixty-one nine. Right. I. Uh, you still got. Then you got to pay your bank. Okay. <laughs> What's great about Philly, the taxes were like three hundred dollars for the year on all three houses. Yeah. All in. Yeah. yeah. It's because it's tax abatement, oh. right? Philly has, and this one thing New Jersey does not get, yeah. is tax incentives create development. The taxes on this land was like $100 a parcel for the year, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, because it's Philadelphia, I can lock those taxes for 10 years. Mm -hmm. They don't increase for 10 years. So these home buyers had $100 a year taxes as if they were, had a vacant piece of land wow. for 10 years, wow. okay? That's Philadelphia. That's why you see a lot of this stuff. Now, Philadelphia also has jobs, proximity to this, proximity to that. They just want the Super Bowl. So Philly has a lot of other stuff. But Philly is a very, um, with all that said, your money goes further in Philadelphia. Now, they get you on the back end because you have to pay city wage tax. And you also have to pay title transfer tax. You have to pay 4% of the sell price of each of these houses to the state and to the city of Philadelphia. 4%. Sounds like another real estate commission. When you sell it? Huh? When you sell it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, they, you know, so they, they get you. Don't worry. You know? um, okay, going back to this. Uh, lender interest, not my 8% guy. The bank bank that we went to, it charges like 5.5%. This is what I happen to know because I went through this whole thing with my partner. This was about 19000 Okay. Um, so let's see. Okay, Sam, give me the total here. Six sixty one. Are we adding the nineteen? Yes. Okay. And the grand total is six eighty nine hundred. Six eighty nine? Yep, six eighty nine hundred. Okay. No, six eighty nine hundred. Six eighty thousand. Six seventy eighty thousand. Okay. Yep, sorry. All right. I sold each one of them for four hundred and ten thousand dollars a piece. Okay. Take off. Number, excuse me. Uh, you you gonna add all the number together? Huh? Two hundred plus two hundred plus six hundred is a million. No 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 no. Six thirty nine plus twenty five plus three, nineteen okay. plus two ten. No, you you left out the two ten. Oh sorry. Uh, was right. It's okay. You make me get my hand dirty. Eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine. Eight hundred ninety thousand nine hundred dollars. Okay. All right. Um, that's you know good enough. So 410,000, okay? That's what we set the average sale price of each one. Got Hit it. that with a 0.95. No, 0.92. Okay. You know what I'm doing? So yeah, you do know the closing costs. I'm, I'm, I'm discounting for real estate commission and for closing costs. Yeah. And for that city of Philadelphia costs and stuff like that. The times you said? Or divide? Yes, multiply it by 0.92. 0.92 is 620. No, the 410. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Four Wait, ten. Four tens for you. I need a new CFO, man. <laughs> four ten <laughs> times four nine two is three seventy seven two hundred. Three seventy seven two hundred. Yes. Okay, I'm leaving some stuff out here, but this is just for rough conversation. Sure. That's our net profit for our, our net, our gross profit per house. Okay. Multiply that times three. One point one three one six hundred. Take that away. Eight ninety nine hundred, two forty seven hundred. Okay, two forty 
700. Okay. Now, on top, I, out of that, I had to pay the 8% preferred return to my guy plus his 12% of profit. Okay? But we got to keep the rest. So, yeah. And how much How much of my money went into this? You say 40 grand, you gave him 40 grand, right? Huh? You 40 grand. 40 grand. What about 40 grand? So it's about 200, 200 grand left. Yeah. That's your problem. Yeah. yeah. I had a partner, you know, so they, they did well too. Six figure each. <laughs> yes.